how are you? I'm Dr. Fernanda Lemos, a coloproctologist from Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. Expert in diseases of the intestines, rectum, and anus. In this video, I'll address a question. When consuming garlic, the act of eating garlic is strictly prohibited and forbidden. Before starting this video, I would like to invite you, who are not part of our team, from our channel called Planeta Intestino, to subscribe now. It's totally free. Click where it says subscribe. A bell will appear next to it if you click it. You will receive notifications that we have updated publications, so you can watch them firsthand, okay? If you are able to do so as well, I kindly ask you to share this video with others. Any place you'll click like share? Share in WhatsApp groups, Facebook, you have freedom. Our objective is to provide costless information, specialized info, info that has the potential to save lives, and by sharing it, you contribute to our efforts in reaching a vast audience, and in turn, you have the ability to save a life. A family with specialized and crucial tips like the ones offered on our channel here. And if you want, give it a like, thumbs up, or a thumbs up because that's important for our categorization here on YouTube so we can keep doing this work, okay? Let's go. When is the consumption of garlic prohibited? When should you not use garlic? Prior to commencing this video, prior to any individuals commencing to throw stones or perhaps being prepared for a conflict, let us proceed. Garlic is categorized as a type of food, so let's refer to it as something truly phenomenal. I'm not here to badmouth garlic. Garlic has an antifungal effect, an antimicrobial effect, and an antiseptic effect. It is extremely rich in flavonoids, which are good for the heart and help prevent heart attacks. It is also beneficial for the brain, preventing cerebral ischemia, and for the circulation in the lower limbs, preventing thrombosis. Garlic is rich in antioxidants, which prevent aging and cellular aging that can lead to cell apoptosis or hyperproliferation, potentially causing certain types of tumors or cancer. Garlic also has anti-inflammatory properties. So, garlic is a truly amazing food, you know? It is a food that has numerous health benefits due to its antifungal, antimicrobial, antiseptic, flavonoid-rich, brain-protecting, circulation-enhancing, antioxidant-rich, anti-inflammatory properties, and its ability to prevent aging and certain types of tumors or cancer. However, there are probably hundreds of videos here on YouTube and on other social media platforms talking about the benefits of garlic. However, I would like to mention to you today what the contraindications are. Who are unable to use it? When it is prohibited for you to utilize garlic. One more thing I want to mention right from the beginning here. When I mention who cannot use it, it is intended for individuals who regularly take garlic capsules or consume raw garlic on a daily basis. I am not referring to the individual who utilizes a small amount of garlic to add to the food for flavoring, all right? It's for those people who consume garlic daily or almost daily, okay? Let us begin. Firstly, garlic is a potent blood thinner that has strong effects. And as mentioned, it has beneficial effects on the cardiac and circulatory parts of the lower limbs, as well as on the cerebral part. However, when you are about to undergo any type of surgery, whether it is abdominal surgery, rectal surgery, gynecological surgery, dental surgery, or neurosurgery. It is recommended that you refrain from consuming garlic for a period of seven days prior to the procedure. And remain for a period of seven days without consuming garlic subsequently, because it has the potential to increase the risk of bleeding due to its anticoagulant properties as the popular terminology they prefer to use, it thins the blood. Well, that can make the bleeding easier. Also, be very careful, people who use anticoagulants and platelet antiaggregants. 
Those with leg blood clots must take thinners. Those with heart issues or history of heart attack or angina use thinners. People who have had any type of ischemic stroke and need to take anticoagulants. Someone with carotid obstruction needs anticoagulants. There are blood thinners, platelet inhibitors, or remedies for circulation. I can mention them. Let's go. Acetyl salicylic acid, which is AS, aspirin, malhoral, doral, somalgin, mervan, marcomar, lixiana, pradaxa, ginkgo biloba, which is a natural anticoagulant, diosmin, Silostazole. You, who are using this medication, be careful with excessive consumption of aloe along with it because it can greatly increase the anticoagulant action and facilitate bleeding. Sometimes a person has low digestive bleeding, bleeds a lot in the rectal area of the anus, or sometimes has high digestive bleeding through the mouth or nosebleeds, or bleeding from the ear, or ocular bleeding, or bleeding in the urine because the anticoagulant effect is higher than expected. Females who also experience a heavy flow during menstruation should exercise caution when it comes to the excessive use and intake of garlic, all right? Another thing to watch for, individuals with low blood pressure, those with low BP. Garlic already, by itself, has a hypotensive power. Someone who has low blood pressure and consumes a lot of garlic will end up having syncope, which are fainting spells, or feeling that famous weakness during the day, that indisposition where you absolutely have no desire. You're welcome. It's cause it's reducing the pressure even more. Also, patients who get treatment have that. Mild hypertension, slightly high BP on meds to lower the pressure. If you're taking garlic along with those medications, that can often be beneficial as it will help you avoid needing another second or third medication to lower your blood pressure. But the person who wants light pressure but already uses some medicine to lower it, if you consume more garlic and start feeling worse, sweating cold, the sensation of fainting, start controlling your pressure. See if it's not dropping too much. It's the same thing for those people who have hypoglycemia because garlic tends to lower blood sugar. Is this good? Yes, helps with diabetes, but some have hypoglycemic episodes. Or even if you are a diabetic individual, utilizing hypoglycemic medications to decrease your blood sugar levels, you know, irrespective of whether it is glybanclamide, glybeparide, insulin or any of the other more contemporary medications to lower blood sugar. Sometimes, if you are encountering frequent hypoglycemic episodes and you are consuming garlic, I would recommend that you cease and adhere solely to the prescribed medication. Or at least make a control to maybe lower the dose of the medication so you can continue with your garlic, okay? Another thing to be careful about is patients who have HIV and are undergoing treatment with antiretrovirals, which is the medication for HIV. Studies have shown that the use of garlic can decrease the bioavailability of these antiretrovirals. As a result, you may experience a slightly diminished effect compared to what was initially expected due to your excessive and daily consumption of garlic. There are some other recent studies showing that it does the opposite. It increases the effect of antiretrovirals too much, and as a result, it starts to generate more side effects. Hence, it is crucial to exercise caution in this matter. It should be noted that the efficacy of specific types of muscle relaxants can be heightened when garlic is also utilized in combination with them. So, be careful who uses a lot of muscle relaxants. There are many famous brands in the market. Tandrolax, Myoflex, Trimusk, Coltrax, Dorflex. I'm not saying you can't use that medication, but if you use it more often and also use garlic and you're experiencing side effects, like a lot of stomach pain and a feeling of weakness, be careful because it might be interacting with the garlic. 
And the last care is something specifically from my area, coloproctology. People who have problems with the rectum and anus, regardless of whether it is hemorrhoidal disease, anal fissure, anal fistula, papillitis, or rectal mucosal prolapse. A multitude of rectal conditions arising from the revelation that ingesting an excessive amount of garlic leads to the acidity of one's feces. Video on our YouTube, for those who haven't seen it, go check it. It's about foods causing acidity. I list all the foods that cause acidic stools. And garlic is one of them. And what does acidic feces mean? The individual from whom you ingested the garlic in a somewhat greater amount following its digestion will release an acidic residue into the fecal matter, resulting in the excretion of fecal matter containing a slight acidic content through the rectum. As a result, you may encounter slightly intensified symptoms such as bleeding, swelling in the anal region, burning, and slightly more intense itching. For my patients who undergo rectal surgeries, I recommend avoiding consuming garlic and all those other foods that make you feel exhausted, all right? So, garlic has great benefits. Here I mentioned a few contraindications and precautions that are rarely talked about on social media. I require your assistance to share and aid many individuals who believe they are performing something extraordinary or beneficial and are actually causing harm to themselves due to a lack of accurate health information. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, like, share. See you in next video.